ranking the Assassin's Creed games, my definitive ranking, we're at the end of the road uh, of my journey with Assassin's Creed in many ways. Um, you know, I'm sure it's a topic we'll talk about on this show over the years to come. It's a topic I'll talk about with the Four Pillars and on the As Always podcast with James. But it's not a game franchise I'm going to be a part of in terms of playing them. It's just not. So I feel like now's the time. 12 games, 12 mainline games, and I'm going to rank them. And I'm going to start from the top and go down to the bottom. Because you guys know my top games. You know what I love. And you can hear me rant and rave about how fucking amazing they are. And you will, obviously. But you want to know what's down the bottom. That's what you really all care about. And that's what's really going to cause hate. So I feel like that's what um, we're going to end with. Um, so we're going to start with number one uh, and what game I think is the best Assassin's Creed game, which is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Uh, now, Assassin's Creed 2, in, in many ways, many people's favorites. And I understand why. The story is incredible. The pacing's amazing. Um, when you add those DLCs, it's not quite as good in terms of pacing. It really drags on at the end there um, when you add sequence um, 12 and 13 in. Um, but in the main release game, when it came out, it was so flawless in terms of pacing. But then you got a Brotherhood, and to me, it was just everything that was good about Assassin's Creed 2, and then all these amazing things added onto it. You had the best character in the franchise's history, one of my favorite characters of all time, in Ezio Auditore. He's 40 years of age, he's in his prime in terms of skill and ability, in terms of his mind, in terms of his wisdom and leadership. He is now leading the Assassins, he becomes the mentor. You watch that journey, you see him go from becoming that young, brash boy to a man. And now this man into a leader and mentor of the Assassin Order. He's fighting against the best villain in Cesare in one of the best open world spaces Assassin's Creed has done in, in Rome. And every part of Rome built into the story. Every part of Rome connected. All the side activities connected. The Thieves missions, Courtesan missions, the assassination contracts, the Leonardo machines that you had to destroy. They literally all connected in and were a part of the story. They added to the story, every part of it, to the world, rebuilding Rome, and then taking down Cesare's cronies, the Templar agents, and then beating him, growing your assassin force up and your brotherhood. It was, it's incredible. It's, it's perfect. It's so fucking perfect. And it gave us so many good missions, so much good story and character moments, and just paid off what, Assassin's Creed 2 led us to, and then put on steroids in Brotherhood. I just think Brotherhood's fantastic. I have nothing but amazing memories. That was peak of my love of Assassin's Creed. Uh, and coming in at number two is Assassin's Creed 2 for that reason, and the only reason Brotherhood's better is for the reasons I said. But Assassin's Creed 2 is fucking incredible. And it gave us that best character in Ezio. It gave us this amazing story that led us from his birth to 40 years of age, and and his, you know, t battling with revenge and vengeance and and what that meant to him, and was it worth it, and he learned so much, and, and it was incredible to see that development as a character, but, you know, learn about the assassins, and learn what matters, and all these secrets behind the scenes, and we can't forget about the modern day side of things, and that's what Brotherhood did so well as well, it's the best modern day uh, in Assassin's Creed, is in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, so you add that element to it as well, when, when the modern day actually mattered, and in two, it was, it was great again and, and continued on from one and, and added more mysteries and the ending of two at the time. Like, I remember playing it for the first time and finishing it. You're like, what the fuck did I just play? What, what just happened? You have so many questions. You, you're invested. You want to know what's next. And, and that's exciting. And that's what I just, I, I loved about it. And that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to going forward. Um... What I'm looking forward to going forward. I don't know what I'm talking about. What I'm, looking to going, what I'm looking to going forward in terms of I'm currently streaming and replaying them. Not that actually the Assassin's Creed franchise is going to do anything about it. Um, but what you were looking to going forward at the time certainly was okay, there's Monday story going. Okay, there's this Ezio character. I want, you know, what's going to happen with them next? I mean, at the time, Assassin's Creed 2, when it ended, you didn't think you were ever going to see Ezio again. You thought, well, one, they finished him and they just went to a new character. They'll do the same here. But getting Brotherhood and then Revelations, like, it was just a treat. To continue this well, the fact, story. Tyler, that you can say after playing through the game however many times, yeah. I still like look times. forward to playing this game. Yeah, is a testament, you know, and that's that's beyond just you being uh, an Assassin's Creed aficionado. Yeah, it's 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 as a gamer being like I to to be able to come back and play this game again and again. Yeah. It's just a testament, you know. Yeah, for sure, and and you're right, you're absolutely right. Like the fact that I can replay them twenty times, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, what a great story and what a great time which is fun and it's and, and part of that is nostalgia for sure but it's just a fun easy to play game 
and enjoyable. And that's what games are for. They're for fun. And, you know, at number three is Revelations. To me, the top three games in the franchise, the Air 2 trilogy. I've always said that. It's my favorite trilogy of games ever. And, you know, what Darby did when he walked in. And we weren't sure about this, right? We're like, oh, he's not Corey May. What's he going to do? Well, how about he pays off all our characters, Desmond, Altair, and Ezio, in the most perfect way possible and connect all four games together and lead us to the future. Unfortunately, the future was shit, but that's not Darby's fault. He didn't write three. But Revelations... You know, having that development, what what let Revelations down is obviously, I think, I mean, they, they made Revelations in like 11 months, you know? Like, it's incredible what they did in such a short amount of time. But what let it down was probably some of these side ambitious gameplay mechanics they tried to do, Den Defense, and it's fine, but it's, you know, it it, it had a bit more fat to it than, than Brotherhood and 2 to me. Uh, and... There was incredible scripting story moments, and those were the highlights. The Altair missions, you know, the actual mission structures of getting the library keys as Ezio, the development of the relationship with Sophia, that story part really was just amazingly done. And then seeing Ezio's development as a wise mentor and learning from Altair, who he'd already learnt from in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brother through the Codex and the Pieces of Eden and, and what that meant, but now to see him you know, in, in so many ways, like, face-to-face. And then to have that payoff at the end, and Ezio to really understand his role, like, to have this person, and you've seen him for 53 years of his life from birth till now, and to know that, wow, this guy has been through everything, and he understands what came before him, and he even understands that he's not the most important person in the world. There's things coming after him that matter more. It was just, Etsy is a special character and it was paid off in an incredible way in Revelations. Uh, yeah, like I said, there was just some small things that, that hold Revelations back. And part of it is the fact that, you know, Etsy is the only really character there from the whole trilogy that's there. It's a whole new place. All the side characters are pretty much new. The only re- returning character is Duccio for sort of a cameo Easter egg. Whereas everyone else are all these new characters, new people and new learnings. And it's great and they're really well done, but... It's just not the same as when you go from two in that Italian Renaissance to Brotherhood, that that peak of Italian Renaissance in Rome and and all these characters we know and love, not just Ezio, but the, the Claudias, the Marias, the uh, La Volpes, the Bartolomeos, the, you know, Machiavellis. And the Borgia family, of course. Like, there was just a lot of payoff that two led to Brotherhood and Revelations was almost like its little tie-off game, but it was, it was about that connection to Altair and that's why it was what it was. Um, but... It just didn't have maybe the, the finesse in some ways that the open world did. But I loved Constantinople too. The music's incredible. It's my favorite soundtrack in Assassin's Creed Revelations. Um, so it's such a well done game. And they're all so close. Don't get it twisted. They're the three best games in the franchise and they're all so close. I love them all. Um, at number four is Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Outside the Etsy trilogy, this game is fucking incredible. You have Edward Kenway. Like what... What an amazing amazing character he was and to have it not be necessarily an assassin story where you're playing an assassin from start to finish but it's an assassin story it's an assassin's creed story you're playing this pirate that's selfish that is greedy and that wants glory for himself but what he meets the assassins early on learns their skills and abilities and he's very good at it but he has no use for their creed he has no use for their belief system and what he does is goes through this journey of loss and and betrayal and sacrifice and what he learns at the end is the value of that creed and he joins them that's the development what an amazing assassin's creed story that is and it's just got a great setting to it the gameplay is incredible sailing around the caribbean as a pirate building your, your crew up and your ship up exploring that world it's got the best open world in the franchise's history the missions are really great. Obviously, there's a lot of tally missions, and that's you know we all know that. And you know some of the some of the villains aren't the best, but it's got some amazing assassinations. It's got some incredible characters, some incredible moments, and the payoffs amazing. Black Flag will always be one of the best Assassin's Creed games, and it's always gonna be one that I'll replay. It's probably gonna be the only one I'll replay, other than the Ezio trilogy and the game that's coming in at number five, which is Assassin's Creed One. The one that started it all. To me, these five upwards are the five good Assassin's Creed games. You know, they're the five games that I'll always 
remember that I'll always play, that I'll always want to replay. And and that's that's exciting. That's exciting. And Assassin's Creed 1 stands out because it's the beginning. It's Altair. The mission structure for your assassinations, it's in some ways the best in the franchise. In fact, it probably is the best in the franchise, let's be real. The parkour, the open world, the stealth, amazing. The story development of learning the importance of this creed and what it means to be an assassin, flawless. So I'll always love and appreciate Assassin's Creed 1, you know. You played Assassin's Creed 1, David? Or did you only play the Ezio games? No, no. I was going to say, I, I mean, I I mean, as, you know, obviously the Ezio trilogy um, improved on, on, on everything. I remember sitting down and playing AC1 for the first time and just being like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, this is a whole new world. I remember watching the demo. I remember watching free running get demoed for the first time at E3 and being like, okay, yeah, I I'm obsessed with it. Like it was just the, 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 the textures of the world, not going to lie. Maybe some of the best voice acting Dude. of, of Dude. the, of the Assassin's Creed franchise, Altair's voice, you know, yeah. the, his, I, don't, I can't remember the name of, of the head of the assassins. Um, Al Mualim. Oh, Al Mualim, like the Templars. Yeah. The whole atmosphere, the Middle Eastern. Yeah, dude. Like, for yeah, sure. for me, really, really special game. Like, it just, that for yeah. me was like, oh, this is next yeah. level. Yeah, you know what for I mean? sure. Yeah. Oh, and just, it was tough, man. It's also tough to kill people. No yeah. countering. Yeah. None of that shit. It was just like, it was it was tough. Yeah. You know, it was hectic. I, I love that game. Yeah. I think it just killed on so many levels. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it was the beginning and it was, and it was... It was revolutionary, and that's when Ubisoft used to do things and and be you know the trailblazers rather than now they just um you know they're just there to copy others at the end of the day and make some money. So it's sad, but there we are. Those are the five great Assassin's Creed games. Now it's time to get in the shit ones. So that's exciting. So coming at number six. So here's the beginning of the shit games, and I wouldn't call this game shit, but it's certainly not to the tier level of the previous five. It. I think this is a good game, actually. This is like the only middle game that I think is good. Uh, and it's Assassin's Creed Origins. It has one of the best characters. And it certainly is the best character since Edward. Um, and, it's, and he stands. Bayek stands with Edward Altair and Ezio. He is an incredible protagonist. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and he just... The journey you go on with him is amazing. And, and the letdowns of Origins is the side characters and what they do as side characters. Um, the mission structure, not the best. The the story flow and pacing, definitely not the best. Quite bad. And, and the ending, not very good either. Uh, but the atmosphere of the world, incredible. Music, incredible. A lot of the exploration, I actually really enjoyed. I enjoyed the open world of Origins the most since Black Flag. And nothing's really come close since. I don't think Odyssey or Valhalla did... Um, what what Origins did. And part of it is the setting. You know, ancient Egypt, it, it's hard to beat that in a lot of ways, but what it was structured really well. It was designed really well. It was a great use of negative space. There's, you know, I have criticisms about how they showed off the map and the allocation of the question marks and it made it feel like you sort of knew the, all the important bits and nothing else mattered. But, you know, it's a very immersive game in a lot of ways. And, and to play as Bayek was always a treat. So you always enjoyed who you were playing as, which matters to me. Um... And, and, he, and he's a great character. And the DLCs were great too. I enjoyed thoroughly Curse of the Pharaohs and the Hidden Ones DLC. They had their own good stories. They had their own good missions. And they were fun. Origins was fun time. It was one of my favourite times, if not my favourite time, of being a content creator and being a part of this House Creed community. So Origins will always have a special place in my heart and I do think it's a good game. I do think Origins was good. But um, everything else after this, I don't think it's good. I actually think it's bad. Now the next one on the list... Number seven is Assassin's Creed Unity, and it's the game that could have been the best game in the franchise, but it just couldn't deliver. What it does to the Assassin fantasy, amazing, where you're kind of creating and building your own assassin, and he's actually like a young assassin apprentice, and you develop him, you build up Arno throughout the story, learning skills and customizing how he looks, and in this space that is revolutionary Paris, it's a great sandbox to play in it's peak like assassin's creed in so many ways and when it mattered you're in urban environments that was what mattered 
and and Paris was a really interesting one. It wasn't perfect, but it was a really interesting one. And it gave a lot of opportunities for some great structured assassination missions. Some great story beats, some great moments. The Arno Belek fight, one of the best moments to me in Assassin's Creed history. But the problem with Unity is it, it wasn't executed correctly. The game was glitchy as fuck, and it meant that these well-planned-out assassination missions didn't even work. The stealth was broken. And at the time, it's probably the most anger I've ever been in a game when it first launched, playing it. But after the patches, you need after the patches, there's a meme. Um, but at least it's more playable. It still doesn't work great. It didn't deliver what it could have on the Assassin Fantasy. It didn't deliver what it could have in co-op. It didn't deliver what it could have in the mission structures. And it certainly didn't deliver what it could have in story. The modern day was useless. In fact, it was god-awful. The villains were terrible. And they ended the best story aspect, which is the internal fight of the assassins, that that ph- philosophical debate that the assassins were having internally that led to Belek killing the mentor in Mirabeau. And then leading to Arno and Belek, um, his master and the apprentice, fighting each other. That was what an incredible story being. He was willing to kill Arno's love because she's a Templar. He didn't care about Arno's faith. He cared more about being an assassin, doing what was right for the assassin, what he thought was right, even though it was wrong. What a great story beat. And they gave it halfway through the game. And then the second half of the game, you're killing useless Templars that suck. And then you end up killing Germain in a terrible boss fight. And the payoff is nothing, where the modern day goes, oh, no, we can't use that skull. I guess that was pointless. And that's the end. Like, what a terrible ending. It was just the game with the most potential in the history of the Assassin's Creed franchise, and it paid nothing off. Disaster. Unity was a disaster. But because of all the potential had it, and because of there were actually good moments and good, good, I guess, ideas, that's why it's up in terms of the shit games. The next two are interchangeable to me. Syndicate and Rogue are both pretty awful games. Rogue's a carbon copy of Black Flag, but with a bad character, bad story, and just not nearly as well executed as Black Flag. The world didn't matter. It felt empty. It felt dead. Um, reusing New York again from from Assassin's Creed Three, but littering it with with collectibles and making us think that mattered. It was just it was just a disaster. And you know, you try to bring Hatham back and make that good. It's not. It just wasn't. And it and it was what it was. But Assassin's Creed Rogue was, to all intents and purposes. A bad game, and I thoroughly don't enjoy it. They made the assassins look like terrible villains and just be Templars in the game. And then they made the Templars try to be and look like assassins. They didn't really delve into who the Templars really were to make them look good. They tried to just make them what assassins are. And they didn't try to make assassins look bad by showing the real, you know, corruption potentially in the assassins or the real faults and flaws in the creed. They just were like, ah, they're just dumb and idiots like Templars are. And it was, yeah, it was just so poorly executed. And it's not memorable. It's just not memorable. It's not a memorable game. Uh, and It's forgettable. And Syndicate's the same. Syndicate was a terrible setting choice more than anything to me. Where you have to create a rope launcher to free run. Like, that that tells you that it's not the right setting for an Assassin's Creed game. Evie I enjoyed as a character, actually. But Jacob was a disaster and his story beats were bad. The mission structures were flawed and... There was no real struggle in these characters at all. They come into London and in 12 months they managed to, as a pair of twins, completely dethrone a 300-year reign of the Templars over London. Bad setting. It was a parody of the franchise in terms of the way it tried to use humour. Uh, and it just didn't deliver really on, on anything you want to see from an Assassin's Creed game. It didn't give us anything new. And what it did give us new was flawed. Jacob was bad. The story was bad, the villains were bad, the humour was bad, and the setting, script, cringeworthy. It was a bad game. Syndicate's not good. Syndicate's not good at all. But but it's not the bottom three. Um, it's not the bottom three um, to me. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, for a long time, audience, David, um, the last game on my list has always been Assassin's Creed 3. It's no longer the last game on the list. In fact... It's number 10. Assassin's Creed 3 is number 10 on the list. Um, Because Assassin's Creed 3 was the worst game in a period of time where Assassin's Creed was Assassin's Creed. Because it had a bad setting, a bad main protagonist, and a bad story. But ultimately, when you replay Assassin's Creed 3, it feels like you're playing an Assassin's Creed game. You have the Homestead missions. Great, great set of missions. 
You're playing as an assassin doing assassin shit. You're in urban environments. You can free roam. You're assassinating. That's there. The naval was introduced. That was a lot of fun. But ultimately you have a character in Haytham who you love to play as, you admire, you connect with. And his arguments and ideas actually make sense. And that was a good philosophical debate that I love in the old Assassin's Creed games between the Assassin and Templars. And that happened between Connor and Haytham. Then you made us play as Connor, who was a flawed character and really, to me, didn't have any sort of development payoff and, and had no development really whatsoever. And though there was a speech he gave that sort of showed off his development, that was cut from the game. So at the end of the day, Assassin's Creed 3 um, just tried to become this revolutionary, Amer well, American revolutionary game that was dull and boring. The setting was bland and and it was it was terrible. And I just, I really hate it. I really hate Assassin's Creed 3, but somehow, because it has those elements of Assassin's Creed, it's not the worst. It's just not the worst. These next two games are the worst. One's way worse than the other. Don't get it twisted. One is way worse than the other, but number 11 is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the newest entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise, and, you know, while I was playing it, there was a lot of fun moments that were happening, you know? Because you're playing as this Viking in Eivor, and there's hidden ones being introduced in, in Bassam and Hytham. There's these story beats that you're like, okay, this is happening. And then you get really into the game the first few hours in. And then it goes on, and on, and on, and on, and on. And you've all seen my review. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the most overbloated, long game full of 90% pointless stuff that it forces you to do con to continue the story, and it's not even about assassins. There's no assassins at all. The only assassin is fucking Bassam and Hytham. And Bassam's not even an assassin. He's actually just fucking Loki the Norse god who's come back to kill Odin and Tyr, who is Sigurd and Eivor. But they don't even know that they're them. Sigurd sort of does, but he doesn't really. And then they all fight, but they don't really know why they're fighting, other than Loki. Loki and Odin fought each other. That's the point of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Nothing to do with Assassins and Templars. No philosophical debate or discussion. No learning about the creed. No learning about the inner workings of the Templars. Though you saw a bit that with Alfred and the Order of the Ancients and that sort of thing. That was sort of nice, but Eivor didn't understand. The character we're playing as didn't get it. He didn't get the codex pages you see in the Hidden Ones bureaus. He didn't get the letter. He couldn't even read it from Bayek. He didn't understand what he had done by helping Alfred in the development of the Templars. He doesn't understand. It's just like a great, as James says, it's just like all the great moments are just like reading a wiki page. They're not actually great for the game. You could read them on a wiki and it would be just as meaningful because it meant nothing to the character we're playing as. And in the end, he doesn't become an assassin. He's just a Viking that cares about glory. And that's the game. And it's uh, so too long. And then post-launch, Ubisoft have managed to de deliver us the worst post-launch content of all time, s other than, of course, Odyssey, and, and, and spit in our faces. And now the narrative director Darby's even left anyway. So who knows? These DLCs are probably going to be a fucking disaster as well. Not that I'm going to play them, but I'll laugh at them when you all complain about them. And they're just asking for microtransactions and your money and, and, and overpricing these things. And they're just the way they've handled this game post-launch has made it even worse. And the more I sit in this game, the more I dislike it. And that's why Valhalla is the second worst game in the Assassin's Creed franchise, in my opinion. But the worst, of course, is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, because that is just a farce. Your characters are awful. Your setting's terrible. Everything about the writing is embarrassing. The post-launch content is greedy and disgusting. The DLCs were useless. It spat in the face of the lore and the history of this franchise. And at the end of the day, what it did was um, make a laughing stock of what Assassin's Creed is. Turning a historical sci-fi into a fantasy RPG. That's not what Assassin's Creed is. That's what they tried to make it. And um, in a lot of ways they succeeded. And in the worst, most embarrassing way possible. Because they made a thousand hour long game filled with pointless repetitive missions in a world that was built in the most bizarre, terribly formatted way possible in this ancient Greece setting with the worst scripted characters of all time. And the voice acting was abysmal, the modern day abysmal. I literally couldn't think of a worse game. 
It's one of the worst games I've ever played. It's so bad. But we all know that. And you you all sort of knew that was going to be the bottom game. But you didn't know Valhalla was going to be second last. So that's my definitive list of Assassin's Creed rankings. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed 2. Assassin's Creed Revelations. Black Flag 1. Origins. Unity. Rogue Syndicate. Assassin's Creed 3. Valhalla. And of course, Assassin's Creed Odyssey.